So we're in uh, Genesis chapter 19. The two angels arrived at Sodom in the evening and Lot was sitting in the gateway of the city. When he saw them, he got up to meet them and bowed down with his face to the ground. My lords, he said, please turn aside to your servant's house. You can wash your feet and spend the night and then go on your way early in the morning. No, they answered, we will spend the night in the square. But he insisted so strongly that they did go with him and entered his house. He prepared a meal for them, baking bread without yeast, and they ate. Before they'd gone to bed, all the men from every part of the city of Sodom, both young and old, surrounded the house. They called to Lot, where are the men who came to you tonight? Bring them out to us that we may have sex with them. Lot went outside to meet them and shut the door behind him and said, no, my friends, don't do this wicked thing. Look, I have two daughters who have never slept with a man. Let me bring them out to you and you can do what you like with them, but don't do anything to these men. They have come under the protection of my roof. Get out of our way, they replied. This fellow came here as a foreigner and now he wants to play the judge. We'll treat you worse than them. They kept bringing pressure on Lot and moved forward to break down the door. But the men inside reached out and put Lot back into the house and shut the door. Then they struck the men who were at the door uh, of the house, young and old, with blindness, so that they could not find the door. The two men said to Lot, Do you have anyone else here, sons-in-law, sons or daughters, or anyone else in the city who belongs to you? Get them out of here because we're going to destroy this place. The outcry to the Lord against its people is so great that he has sent us to destroy it. So Lot went out and spoke to his sons-in-law who were pledged to marry his daughters. He said, hurry and get out of this place because the Lord is about to destroy the city. But his sons-in-law thought he was joking. With the coming of dawn, the angels urged Lot saying, hurry, take your wife and your two daughters who are here or you'll be swept away when the city is punished. When he hesitated, the men grasped his hand and the hands of his wife and of his two daughters and led them safely out of the city, for the Lord was merciful to them. As soon as they brought them out, one of them said, flee for your lives. Don't look back and don't stop anywhere in the plain. Flee to the mountains or you will be swept away. But Lot said to them, no, my lords, please. Your servant has found favour in your eyes and you have shown great kindness to me in sparing my life. But I can't flee to the mountains. This disaster will overtake me and I'll die. Look, here is a town near enough to run to, and it is small. Let me flee to it. It is very small, isn't it? Then my life will be spared. He said to him, very well, I will grant this request too. I will not overthrow the town you speak of, but flee there quickly, because I can't do anything until you reach it. That is why the town was called Zoar. By the time Lot reached Zoar, the sun had risen over the land. Then the Lord rained down burning sulfur on Sodom and Gomorrah from the Lord out of the heavens. Thus he overthrew those cities and the entire plain, destroying all those living in the cities and also the vegetation in the land. But Lot's wife looked back and she became a pillar of salt. Early the next morning, Abraham got up and returned to the place where he had stood before the Lord. He looked down towards Sodom and Gomorrah, towards all the land of the plain, and he saw dense smoke rising from the land like smoke, like smoke from a furnace. So when God destroyed the cities of the plain, he remembered Abraham. And he brought Lot out of the catastrophe that overthrew the cities where Lot had lived. Lot and his two daughters left Zoar and settled in the mountains, for he was afraid to stay in Zoar. He and his two daughters lived in a cave. One day the elder daughter said to the younger, Our father is old and there is no man round here to give us children, as is the custom all over the earth. Let's get our father to drink wine and then sleep with him and preserve our family life through our father. That night they got their father to drink wine and the elder daughter went in and slept with him. He was not aware of it when she lay down or when she got up. The next day the elder daughter said to the younger, last night I slept with my father. Let's get him to drink wine again tonight and you go in and sleep with him so we can preserve our family line through our father. So they got their father to drink wine that night also and the younger daughter went in and slept with him. Again he was not aware of it when she lay down or when she got up. So both of Lot's daughters became pregnant by their father. The elder daughter had a son and she named him Moab. He is the father of the Moabites today. The younger daughter also had a son and she named him Ben Ammi. He is the father of the Ammonites today. Well, what a messy situation. What a horrible chapter at so many levels. And I'm sure as I read that through, you, you reviled at uh, various aspects. Um, the, 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 the strange priorities of Lot that uh, uh, because these men visiting have come under his roof, they're under his protection, but in some way his daughters aren't, and that he offers them to the men. The, the, the horror of the crown, 
cry town uh, male population crowding around to to visitors wanting wanting to to rape them it's it's horrible stuff and yet we see god's grace in this chapter you remember at the end of yesterday's chapter um, abraham had negotiated god down to 10 righteous people would he spare the city well there aren't 10 righteous people here so god isn't going to spare the city but he is going to spare the righteous within the city that's a remarkable sign of his grace but the the way they are to escape from that judgment is to to flee there is a need for them to to get themselves out of the city for judgment is coming they need to respond to the warnings tragically that the sons-in-law don't they they just think it's a joke they're, they're not going to listen tragically lot's wife although she is on her way out her heart is still in uh, sodom and gomorrah and she turns back for a look and uh, she uh, faces god's judgment and it's only lot and his two daughters who escape that judgment and yet the bizarre thing is that the, 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 the righteous lot who's been saved his family is in such disarray that his daughters then end up getting him drunk and sleeping with him and fathering uh he fathers two two sons who are going to be the the the, the heads of two nations that are going to be at war with god's people uh, throughout the old testament it's a strange chapter isn't it but but here is god's grace to lot perhaps in answer uh, to abraham's prayer here is god's judgment on sin uh, and here is the the mess that sin uh, causes the, the the terror that it uh, reaps in people's lives and uh, the, the the way that it's so easy for the righteous to get mixed up in that and to lose any sense of, of priority and what is right and what is what is wrong there are still aspects though aren't there of lot that are, are righteous still indicators of of, of his heritage uh, with abraham uh, the, the the hospitality offers at the beginning uh, ends up in in his rescue at the end um, there's a direct link there isn't there between him welcoming these men to his house uh, and him being uh, freed at the end again an encouragement to us to, to, to be involved in hospitality uh, but uh, most of all i think this chapter just uh, warns us so severely um, of, of the the horror of sin and the judgment it calls down uh, of the danger of us being mixed up and uh, affected by the sinful lifestyles of those around us and the need to resist that um, it's a reminder to be careful what we watch um, uh, who, who we mix with and how how we live our lives um, how much is is infiltrating our minds that is unhealthy and unhelpful that will color the way we behave um, are we getting caught up with uh, the society in which we are in remember uh, lot had that choice abraham said choose where you will go and he chose this place because he thought it looked uh, like the best the most materially wealthy and yet it was a place of great sinfulness and he ends with nothing and this is a warning to us uh, today so it's time to search our hearts it's time to examine ourselves before god to ask if there's anything we need to learn from this passage anything we need to flee from but also it's a time to thank god for his uh, justice in dealing with sin but also his mercy in rescuing uh, those who are his people